Hi, my name is Glenn Matthewson. I thought I would show you one of the common mistakes that I teach about and talk about in my webinar, Common IRC Mistakes. We're going to talk next about the confusions between fire blocking, fire stopping, and draft stopping. Three very similar sounding things, and they've swapped names around in the past. Um, and I see these get heavily, heavily confused amongst people. So this is one of those things where we're not going to go deep into every one of the details of these subjects, but we're going to go far enough to understand their differences. So let's start with this beautiful house here I, I've drawn for us. And I get a fire here inside the wall cavity. Okay, this is inside a concealed cavity, which means I can't see it. Okay, I can't see it and the smoke might not be breaching, which means delayed response time. Smoke alarms might not go off. For a while till it breaches out of the wall or somebody hanging out down in this basement may not realize there's a fire slowly building inside the wall so being in a concealed location changes the risk factor because our awareness of it has been delayed and so that fire then starts to grow and it and it follows and it drafts up there and follows the oxygen and the hot gases that are rising up through and that fire just chases through all these little hidden secret spots of the house and by the time it breaks loose and hits the smoke alarm, how much time have we lost to escape or to be rescued either way? And so this is the problem that we want to solve with fire blocking. And basically what we're trying to do is not make a very good campfire. I love camping. I'm a big camper. I live in Colorado. I love making fires um, all different ways. But I know one thing is that you can't just pile a bunch of wood up with no airflow through it and expect to have a good campfire. Good campfire is going to need to have airflow and oxygen that can draft through and flow through all your sticks. So what we're trying to do is make a house a really bad campfire that just won't start burning. And so here's where we get a little bit of code. I try not to quote or read too much code in my classes. I encourage you to go read the code in your own time. Uh, 30211 will tell us what fire blocking is. It's in combustible construction. So first of all, we have to, you know, if you have a fire made out of cinder blocks, you're good. If Who cares how much airflow runs through it? You're not going to get that campfire burning. So in combustible construction, fire blocking shall be provided to cut off both vertical and horizontal concealed draft openings and to form an effective fire barrier between stories and between a top story and the roof space. Now, just look at those words for a minute because I'm not going to read them to you again, but you'll recognize them again here in just a little bit. So what fire blocking does is this. It comes in and puts all these block points in these things, all these stopping points to stop that hot gas from running through. And what it does is it compartmentalizes that concealed fire. So hopefully that concealed fire in the basement will be compartmentalized and will breach the wall covering and set off the smoke alarms, become obvious to the occupants, before it's traveled its way all the way up to the attic. That's about buying time for escape. But let's see how far back fire blocking goes. I am a collector of vintage code books. I know, I'm fun at all the parties, tell me about it. Um, I've got over 500 vintage codes that go back to my oldest is 1859. This is the 1908 City of Baltimore building code from over 100 years ago. And here you have your section on fire blocking um, except back then, look at the title in the top left. It was called Filling of Wall Space at Floors. So they were short of really even a name for it here in this, in this text, at least. But if you read this, you can see some pretty shocking stuff. We're talking about putting brick and mortar inside the wall. It was such a big deal in 1908 that they actually had color drawings in the code book to show you the importance of fire blocking. This is the fire blocking that you're seeing from 100 years ago, brick and mortar installed inside the walls. And these are multiple pictures they had in a 100-year-old code book. These were the only color things in this book. Um, here you can see again. But if you notice here, it's called fire stop. If you read right up that brick, fire stop, not fire block. Now, interestingly enough, that little two by four, that's today's fire blocking. So anytime contractors, if you're complaining about fire blocking or inspectors, if someone's complaining to you about it, maybe remind them what it used to be like and throwing a two by four in suddenly sounds really, really good. No problem. So in this history about this confusion between fire blocking and fire stopping, let's go to this uniform building code in 1937. And if I open that up here, you can see the title in the section title says fire stops. But then read just briefly, 
cut off concealed draft openings form an effective barrier between stories. See, it's that's the exact same language that we just saw a minute ago, um, but that was for fire blocking. So what gives? Well, what it is is back in this day, early on, there was no fire blocking. There was fire stopping, and that's all it was, was fire stopping. It wasn't until the 1991 Uniform Building Code that the word fire block starts to appear. And now you can see fire block and look at the same language in concealed spaces, interconnection of concealed to cut off openings. So it's the exact same thing. We just changed the name from fire stopping to fire blocking. And that's because a new concept came around and I guess we had a better name for it. So we changed, we moved the name fire stop over to this new concept around that time. And um, fire blocking is now what, what fire stopping used to be. So what's fire stopping today in today's code? Well, it's called penetration fire stop systems. It's not just fire stopping. It is a tested and listed system that you install. Here you can see, here's one of the last code books where it said fire stopping. And again, we get the description of what is actually fire blocking. But now you see today's 2018 IRC and over here you see, you see this section for penetration fire stop system. It is completely 100% absolutely totally different and unrelated to fire blocking. So what is it? What's fire stopping? Fire stopping, and again, I'm gonna be speaking generally in a residential standpoint. When you get commercial, things get bigger, um, but this it's still the same general concept. You just, it would apply to places other than just dwelling units. If you have one dwelling unit, just one house, single family house, you have no fire stopping. There is no fire stopping because you don't have a tested fire resistive assembly, like a one hour rated firewall, okay? Let's move that to now two family dwelling, okay? A duplex or a paired home if, if you're in a wealthy part of the country. They don't call them duplexes in Vail or Aspen. They call them paired homes. Um, so we've got two. We've got two homes and we've got two home families that don't know what the other family is doing. So if one family is being an idiot and falling asleep with a, with a cigarette, their smoke alarm might go off, but that's not interconnected to the, the family on the other side. Everybody in the one family here is going to know of the hazards that their behavior has created, but the other people won't. So we need a protection from them. And so the, these blue lines here are our fire rated assemblies that want to protect one family's fire from getting to the other family's fire. So here you go. This family does something, accident happens, whatever. They get a fire that starts and meanwhile, we've got weird things like maybe you got recessed lights, we've got plumbing, we've got electrical outlets. We all have all these penetrations in this fire rated wall. And if we put a hole in a fire rated wall, you know, with drywall on both sides, maybe two layers of drywall, if we put a hole through that, well, we now have a hole for the hot gases to get through and for that fire to sneak through. And so we might need those holes, right? You still need electrical outlets and walls. You still need plumbing and walls. So we've got to put the holes there, but we have to protect the holes. And so that's what a fire stop system does. People often hear the word fire caulk and fire caulk seems like is treated as just this magical solution to any hole in a rated wall. Here you have a plastic pipe going through a rated wall. In a fire situation, the plastic's gonna melt out and you would be left with a big hole where the idea is of fire stopping is that this material is gonna expand and harden and fill in the hole under a fire situation. You've got it kind of sloppily installed here and pretty sloppily installed here. There are some serious nuances to how you install fire blocking so that, or fire stopping, see I even made a mistake, fire stopping. There are a lot of nuances to getting it installed so that it actually works like it's supposed to. Um, today we see fire stop special inspectors now for a lot of applications because the fire stop industry is proprietary. It's free, it's free market. Folks can come up with any kind of wild and crazy idea and then test it according to the proper test standards. But then you've got to install it exactly per that. I've heard people say that no more than I do about fire stopping and people in that industry that a good percentage of the fire stopping out there installed actually would not perform if a fire were to actually happen. And that's why we get special inspectors now, because it's not just all about painting caulk, this fire caulk 
all over the place and smearing it everywhere. Um, here you can see a tube of fire caulk. And just to reiterate, you can see here, you know, it's UL classified. It's tested and listed as a through penetration fire stop system. So totally, totally different from what fire blocking is. And there's different kinds. Like here's just, I mean, there's a ton of different kinds. This is just one example. This is a putty pack for an electrical box. And so if you had two electrical boxes back to back on a wall, fire is gonna be able to run right through those things. Um, so this is a different type of fire stopping. Now you have to be careful when you tell people to fire stop the electrical outlets because they might misunderstand what you're talking about. Those of you that understand this subject are hopefully chuckling a little bit at this photo right now. Um, this is not proper installation of fire call here. So we'll avoid that. This is just the funny picture. But how do we know it's not proper, guys? Professionals read instructions. That's the only reason we know. You've got to go to the instructions with this type of stuff. All right, so what's draft stopping? Draft stopping is the third one. And boy, what's all this stopping about? Well, it's still stopping fire, but it's stopping it in a slightly different way. It's stopping it more in a horizontal draft, which is harder to draft. It's a lot harder to get fire to travel horizontally than vertically, right? You know, chimneys go vertically. Gases are going to rise from their pressure differentials. So draft stopping. Draft stopping is about floor systems, and it lists specifically two types in the code. It talks about open uh, floor truss systems like this that are open web. And so these are floor trusses, and yet air, and if air can flow, so can hot gases and fire flow through the entire floor system. Uh, here's an example. Floor systems like this are great for use in, uh, this is a pop the top where they took the roof off of a one-story home and they come in with an open, um, an open web floor truss for the second floor. And this allows them to put all the mechanicals and stuff in the floor and not mess up the, the existing house below, the living space below. So there's one example of you can see of it in use and you can see how all this stuff this whole floor area is wide open for airflow and thus fire flow. The other way is if you have a dropped ceiling below a floor system. Like in this example here, you see the bathroom in this basement has a dropped ceiling below the bottom of these eye joists. And so thus, that creates this floor ceiling cavity that's now wide open. And yes, they probably should move that bath fan uh, down to the level of the floor, if you notice that. Where are my inspectors with their observation skills here while I talk. Um, so draft stopping. There are some limits to this and some, some rules on this. It's in floor assemblies like this where we have a floor above and a ceiling below. It's a concealed space. Draft stopping and fire blocking is about slowing fire spread in concealed spaces that we can't see. Fire stopping is stopping a very visible fire from going from one place of a wall or ceiling or and passing through that assembly to the other side of the wall or ceiling. So a totally different dynamic. Um, and so for draft stopping, you can't have a floor cavity area greater than a thousand square feet. If it's more than a thousand square feet, you need to break it in half approximately equal. That's where the code says something along the lines of approximately. Um, so if I've got a thousand and ten square foot floor, I don't want to see the break at 990 square feet and 20 square feet on the other side. That's not approximate, but I'm not going to force somebody. We don't have to force them to put it dead smack in the middle. You're just trying to generally break the areas over a thousand square feet in half into lesser size areas. So we don't have to get carried away about exactly the location. But what about this floor down here? Well, we don't know. We don't have enough information. Is that floor finished on the other side? Is this a crawl space I'm showing you? Is it a basement? Did it get the required drywall or is it fire sprinklered and doesn't have drywall? If it's not a concealed space, the fire is gonna breach very quickly and become more occupant, more uh, observant and, uh, and noticeable to the occupants. Smoke alarm will go off, etc. So that would only matter if you had a, a ceiling underneath the floor. My name is Glenn Mathewson. I hope you had a fun time learning with me today. I hope I inspired you. Please connect with me on LinkedIn, Facebook, check out my nerdy YouTube videos.